Good morning. Good morning. I'm Wendy Ritten. I'm a retired pastor from Oshkosh. I've been here before, but it's been a while. How are you? <laughs> Good. Um, I have just a few announcements this morning. Today's the last day if you want to order a, a poinsettia for the holidays here at the church to decorate the sanctuary. Um, you've probably seen this Advent Festival of Hymns, Lessons, and Anthems on December 15th, and on the back there's a Advent musical and meal on Wednesdays, December 11th and 18th. You might want to look at that. Also, I've been asked to announce um, that we need Christmas cookies for the shut-ins. See Jill if you have any questions. And after worship, um, they're going to start selling your new cookbook. I can't wait to see it. I'm a cookbook person. So other than that, um, just read through your announcements. And if I miss something, I'm sorry. How's that? And I probably missed something. All right. Welcome again to worship. And again, it's good to be with you this morning. Let's stand and begin with our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, our refuge, our delight, our beginning, and our end. Let us come in truth before the one who loves us and has freed us from our sin. Eternal One, robed in majesty and mercy, we confess that sin has taken hold of us, and we are complicit in its power. We are disturbed in spirit, and our hearts cannot rest. Unbind us and set us free. Lead us again to the waters of rebirth, that we may live just and generous lives for the good of your world and the care of our neighbors, following in the servant way of Jesus. Amen. These words are trustworthy and true. Christ bore our sins once for all on the cross, swallowing up death forever. For his sake you are forgiven, and God remembers your sin no more. Let your heart be glad again and rejoice in your salvation. Amen. Let us sing.
the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and ever living God, you anointed your beloved Son to be priest and sovereign forever. Grant that all the people of the earth, now divided by the power of sin, may be united by the glorious and gentle rule of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for the readings. The first reading for Christ the King Sunday is taken from Daniel 7. As I watched, thrones were set in place, and an ancient one took his throne. His clothing was white as snow, and the hair of his head was like pure wool. His throne was fiery flames, and its wheels were burning fire. A stream of fire issued and flowed out from his presence. A thousand thousand served him, and ten thousand times ten thousand stood attending him. The court sat in judgment, and the books were opened. As I watched in the night visions, I saw one like a human being coming with the clouds of heaven. And he came to the ancient one and was presented before him. To him was given dominion and glory and kingship, and all peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that shall not pass away, and his kingship is one that shall never be destroyed. The word of the Lord. The Lord is robed in majesty and armed with strength. The Lord has made the world so sure that it cannot be moved. The water 
waters have lifted up, O Lord, the waters have lifted up their voice. The waters have lifted up their pounding waves. Your testimonies are very sure, and holiness befits your house, O Lord, forever and forevermore. The second lesson is from the first chapter of Revelation. Grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come, and from the seven spirits who are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth. To him who loves us and freed us from our sins by his blood and made us to be a kingdom, priests serving his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Look, he is coming with the clouds. Every eye will see him, even those who pierced him, and on his account all the tribes of the earth will wail, for it is to be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. The word of the Lord. Gospel according to John, the 18th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Pilate entered the headquarters again, summoned Jesus, and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you ask this on your own, or did others tell you about me? Pilate replied, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate asked him, So you are a king? And Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Oh, today is the happy new year of the, of the church year. And next week starts Advent already. I'm never ready for Advent. Are you? <laughs> never. And I assume after today, your beautiful sanctuary done up for fall will change over to blue. And you'll have a Christmas tree and lights and fun things. It's a good time of year. We had snow, which was the weirdest day ever. <laughs> but it, we had it, and it was really beautiful and messy and reminded us all what winter in Wisconsin is all about. But this is also one of my favorite Sundays, partly because I could get a little radical in the parish. Most of my parishioners were hunting. <laughs> we're gone. <laughs> Very few people were there to worry me about much. Um, I will share with you, I was so comfortable in my last parishes that um, at my small country church, <laughs> the president of the congregation always went deer hunting and was always gone on Sunday morning. Except for one thing, I found out that he had his cell phone with him. So before I started my sermon, I took his wife's cell phone and I called him up in the deer stand. And I said, Roger, everybody can hear you, so be careful how you answer these questions. <laughs> Where are you finding God in your deer stand this morning? Share with us all. It was fun. We had a great time. And he just looked at me and shook his head the next week. He was like, I don't know why you did that. It was fun. You've got to have a little fun in church. I had been there for 15 years at that point. I, it was okay. 
But again, this is one of my favorite Sundays because what you probably don't know about me is that I have an associate's degree from years ago in modern European history. Um, it is one of my passions. I love, I love that whole era from 1500 on. It's just, it's so much fun because it's full of such rich stories about kingdoms and kings and queens and princes and all of those things, which is kind of what we're talking about this morning, Christ the King Sunday. I remember specifically studying King James, King Henry VIII, a benevolent man who loved to chop off people's heads. You know, I mean, just the, it's so interesting because it was such a different time in this world. And the kings ran the church, and the kings ran the monarchy, and ran the government. They had all the power they could want, and they used it. And even back in Jesus' day, you had King Herod, who eh, kind of kowtowed a little bit to Rome, but he too, you know, his wife asked him to behead John, and he does it. You know, for whatever reason, he does it. Kings have a power and an aura about them that we don't often think about. Um, when we think about kings and queens, we probably naturally go to England, but there are a lot of countries that have kings and queens, a lot, um, more than we would know. Most of the time, they're, nowadays, they're more figurehead than anything else. They don't really rule over a lot of people, but they still exist, and they still have protocols, and they still have things they want to do. Um, I, I was in high school, I, I was a graduating senior in 1977 when Diana was, was killed and the whole world stopped. We had not, we couldn't take it. It was just an unseen thing. And it, it shook us all. But here, even with Queen Elizabeth passing in the last couple years, and uh, we have the new era of kings and queens, um, the queen consort, that's a new one for history. We don't always think about all of the things that they do and all of the things that they cannot do. And it's very different now than it was back in the day. Very different. Um, when I was in college, no, it was more seminary, a little bit later than that. We lived in Iowa and near Decorah, Iowa. And if you know anything about Decorah, Iowa, you know that it is one specific range of people called Norwegians. <laughs> and they have what is their, their museum, their great museum, and it's well known, is called the Westerheim, or Vesterheim. And it's, a, it's an amazing place. I mean, I went, I chaperoned one of my son's school trips to the Vesterheim. It was really fascinating to see. And one year, the king and queen of Norway came to visit Decorah, Iowa and the Vesterheim Museum. And the whole place was a buzz. I mean, 40 miles all around that little town of Decorah, people were just, wow. <laughs> the king and the queen are coming. And it was really a fun time, but there was a whole lot of pomp and circumstance that you and I never see in our lifetime here in the United States. We're a different kind of animal, I guess. Um, not I guess, we are. But um, it was really fascinating to see the seriousness and the, all of the, like I said, the pomp and the circumstance that went with a, a, a royal visit. They had red carpets throughout the downtown area, I mean, so that they wouldn't have to walk on the concrete. Oh, yeah. I mean, they did a lot of stuff. And it was just fascinating to watch and to see. And it covered the news for, I, it seemed like weeks. Probably wasn't quite that long, but it seemed like it. But in Jesus' day, the kings and the queens had a lot more authority and a lot more say in what was going on around them. And if they didn't like you, you were probably going to survive long. And then Pilate comes out, who was working for Rome, and he's like, eh, the Jews are kind of a pain in his side, kind of a thorn that he has to deal with. And Pilate looks at him and says, so are you the king? And Jesus is like, eh, not the way you mean. <laughs> I don't chop people's heads off. That's not my thing. What does Jesus do in his time with us? He serves people. He feeds the hungry. 
He helps people that need their, his help. He heals. He serves. He's a servant king. And that is what this whole day represents, the servant king. And there are a lot of different ways to serve. There are tons of different ways to serve. I had the great joy, this is a personal moment, sorry, got to get it in there because it was so much fun. I will likely never be a grandmother. So I have three sons, the, the youngest is the only one left. <laughs> that, that might, it might happen. But um, the older two, for various reasons, um, are not having children. And so as I think and I get, I'm getting older, um, our next door neighbor, a couple of years ago on New Year's Eve, there was a police car that pulled up right in front of our house with the lights flashing. And I took a picture of it and sent it to my sons. And the oldest one replied back, Mom, what did you do? <laughs> and the middle son replied back, Oh, oh, Mom, who died? And he was right, because our next door neighbor had passed away. And the problem was she not only locked her doors at night, she put a chair under the doorknob so they couldn't get in right away. And we heard a lot of pounding and they had to pound the door down and it was just kind of a nightmare. Well, within the next week, her daughter came and they got the house put back together. They got it ready to sell. And they sold it to this young, adorable couple. Um, just beautiful people. And they're so sweet and they're so young. And they had their first baby in August or July. I guess it was July. And um, since I can't, I won't have grandchildren of my own, I offered to babysit if they ever needed help with that. And last night they took me up on it. I am so sore. <laughs> I am so sore. I'm not used to walking around with a child in my arms. Um, you know, usually once they're born, you, you kind of work your muscles into that as they grow. No. <laughs> But it was so much fun because she's such a happy child and she's very smiley and she just, as long as you pay attention to her, she's great. She was just great. And I had so much fun. And I got to thinking, and they're, they're a Christian couple and um, there are things around the house that remind you of that. And it was so sweet because uh, when she started to fuss a little bit, I started singing to her and immediately she stopped. Well, her dad plays guitar, her mom plays piano. They are a musical family, so it worked really well. But I got to thinking about what I was going to talk about this morning, and I thought, that's, that's what kingship is in the realm of Jesus Christ. It's helping out the neighbor. And they insisted on paying me, which I did not want. So I told them, I said, well, I'm going to give it to the food pantry, because I don't, this is not who I am. And they were fine with that. But this beautiful child that I held in my arms with all smiles and just giggles. She had the fascinating, she's four months old now, and she's just giggles. And I, I thought, how do babies survive back in Jesus' day? When you think about the ride that Mary had just before she gave birth on the back of a donkey, and I got to thinking, this is perfect because Advent starts next week, and that's when we start that journey, that journey towards uh, Bethlehem. And it was just a lovely reminder that the Spirit brought to me last night. Uh, it carries on with me this morning, but again, I am really sore. <laughs> Kings and queens and princes and dukes and all of those things we're not familiar with here in this country, not by, by much. But I want to leave you with, throughout history, most kings and queens were pretty full of themselves, but there is one that wasn't, and that understood the Christian message. During World War II, when the Nazis started moving into Denmark, they announced that every Jew in Denmark had to have a gold star on their clothing. And you may remember bits and pieces of that everywhere they went, they had to have they had to be identified. But the king of Denmark decreed that every Danish citizen should put that same star on their clothing, whether they were Jewish or not. Because he understood that
that to be servants of Christ, and he said it this way, to be servants of Christ, we help our neighbor. We are all Danish first, and then we split up in our other little groups after that. But first and foremost, we stand together as people of God in the Danish church, in the Danish country. He got it. He understood what it meant for Jesus to be called the King of the Jews. And Jesus says, no, 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 no. I'm the king of a different kingdom, a kingdom that serves, a kingdom that cries together, that hurts together, that rejoices and dances together. Because that's who we are as Christians. Amen. Let's sing. confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate with the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, 
and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Rooted in God's abundant love for the world, let us pray for, the, for our neighbors, the church, and all creation. Revive our congregations, synods, and national church body to reflect the love, justice, and kinship of your kingdom. Rise up diverse leaders who teach and serve your people. Merciful God. Nourish parched, land, parched lands and bring relief to flooded places. Protect wildlife habitats and endangered species that the chorus of creation's praise res resounds with joy. Merciful God. Grant wisdom to the leaders who govern, legislate, and deliberate on our behalf. Advance your, your nonviolent reign <clears throat> of justice, seeking love through your work. Merciful God. Draw near to those who are detained, on trial, or incarcerated. Transform systems of retribution into systems of recon reconciliation and restoration. Empower activi activists who activate for change. Merciful God. Remind us of your en enduring love in all sessions. Guide the planning efforts of worship leaders and volunteers who usher our congregation into a meaningful advent. Merciful God. We especially pray for healing and comfort for those on our prayer list. Merciful God, in your eternal presence, the saints sing of your majesty. Join our voices with theirs in praise to the one who loves and frees us from sin. Merciful God, we offer our prayers to you, gracious God, trusting in your boundless love for all all that you have made through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Let us share that peace with one another. Peace be with you. Peace be with you.
Beautiful, thank you. Jesus, our portion and our cup, you offer yourself in love for the world. And in this meal, you nourish us with your life. Fill us with your abundance that we may feed the hungry and welcome the stranger, trusting in your name. Amen. The Lord be It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should, at all times and in all places, give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Prayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He broke it, gave thanks, and gave it for all to eat, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And again after supper he took the cup. He blessed it and gave it for all to drink, saying, Take and drink. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this to remember me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us always to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forget our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into your but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Behold, God is making all things new. Take your place in the new creation. You may be seated.
And now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Faithful God, you have spread before us a feast of rich food and drink in, in the body and blood of your Son. Now send us out to labor with you in service to the world you have made and among the people you have made your home. In Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Gracious God, loving all your family with a mother's tender care, as you sent the angel to feed Elijah with his heavenly bread, assist us in this ministry on which we are sent forth. In your love and care, nourish and strengthen those to whom we bring this sacrament, that through the care, excuse me, that through the body and blood of your Son, we all may know the comfort of your abiding presence. Amen. Before the blessing, I want to thank you once again for having me this morning. It is lovely to see you all again. Have a beautiful and wonderful Advent and Christmas time. The ancient one enthroned, the crucified one now risen, the indwelling one poured out, bless you now and forever. Amen. Let's sing.
Um, before I dismiss, let, let's thank Pastor Wendy for um, leading the service this morning. Go in peace. Encourage one another in Christ. Thanks be to God.